One of the most important problems that you have in every project is working with URLs. So normally you want to parse your query parameters, add your query parameters, get base URL, remove or add parts of the string. And actually it is not that comfortable to work in plain JavaScript with URLs because there is not such methods that we need every day. This is why in this video I want to talk about the most popular library to solve all these problems, and this is QueryString. Hi, I am Alexander Kocherhin from Monster Lessons Academy, where I am teaching you how to become a developer or improve your skills of being a developer in learning by doing way. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I will link everything that I am mentioning in the description box below. So let's jump right into it. So as I already said, we want to work with URLs efficiently. So we want first of all to parse query parameters and work with them like with the object because it is more comfortable than with strings, then we want somehow to stringify them back, also we want to get base URL or parse some params from it and so on. So let's have a look on the library that I recommend for you. So here this library is, this is query string library on npm, and as you can see on weekly downloads it is like super popular. So let's have a look. So this is the library as a node package. And this is actually the problem, because we can't simply take some script from CDN of this library and use it everywhere. This is really a node package and it has its dependencies. Which means normally if you are using some framework like Vue, React or Angular, you won't have any problems. You simply write npm install query string and you are good to go. But here in my test project where I want to show you this library, I need to use for example Webpack in order to build all my node packages in browser compatible format. But we will get there in a second. So as you can see here there are a lot of methods. So for example you require query string and you have your location search which is basically question mark and then some params and you can use methods like parse to parse your query parameters or then to stringify them later. So let's first configure this library with webpack and then I will show you all these methods. So here is my project, as you can see I have only index.html, there is one script here main.js and here main.js is empty. So what we want actually to do, we want in our main.js to import this library. For this we need to write const query string require query string. But the problem is here that first of all we need in our project here to create package.json and install this package. So here we can say npm install, uh, actually npm init, and it will init our project. So I simply click on all questions enter, and now our package.json will be created. So as you can see this is our package.json, and now here we can install some node packages. So first of all I want to write here npm install, and here will be the name query-string. And this will install this library on our machine. Now we want to build this library, because with this line here, as you can see in main.js, const uh, query string require, we can't really just use it in browser, actually we can try. So if I will jump in our project, here is my index.html, I reload the page and I'm getting an error, require is not defined. Because actually as you can see inside query string, this require first of all is not possible to use without building it, because in browser it's not supported. For this we need some bundler and I prefer to use Webpack. And if you don't know what Webpack is, it is a bundler for frontend and backend. So we can bundle our project or our files in different formats in frontend or in Node.js. So here are some simple steps in order to bundle our project. So I want just to copy this line, npm install webpack, webpack CLI, and I will just paste it in the console. So what it will do, it will install webpack as a library, as well as a CLI tool. This is it. 
And now after installation we can use some commands from Webpack in order to bundle our main.js in the output bundled file, which is suitable for browser. Now Webpack was successfully installed in my project and to use it in console actually we need to add new script in the part of package.json. So here we have test script, we can remove it and I want to add Webpack script and here will be just Webpack because Webpack is a binary and we can't directly write here Webpack in the console because it won't work, it's not installed globally. But now, after we edit in script this line, we can write npm, then run Webpack and it will write our Webpack. But what we want to do is to give here our main.js, because in other case it will try to get our default JavaScript file in another place. And here I am simply hitting enter, we don't need to create any Webpack configuration and it will work out of the box. As you can see here everything is successfully built for us and now we can see in our project that there is a dist folder and inside we have main.js. And as you can see here it's super huge file because Webpack built it and bundled everything for us and now in our index.html we can add this main.js from dist. So this slash main chess. And as I already said, we are doing these steps with Webpack only because I don't have any frontend framework to show you. And normally you will use some frontend framework and you can just uh, install this like npm package and forget about all these problems uh, with installing packages through Webpack. But here I have just index.js and index.html and here we have now this script source dist main.js. And if we will look into the console, here I am reloading the page and as you can see we don't get any errors. This means that now a query string is available for us and let's check this out. Uh, for this I will just jump inside our main.js and write here console log. So what we want to do here is use our query string. So let's create new property which is called parsed and we can try to parse query parameters with query string. For this we have method parse and as you can see it have two parameters. So first of all is query and second is options. So let's start with query. Normally in browser we have such thing as location.search and it is actually used in all frontend frameworks, which means here I will just write something like foo equals bar, and when we reload the page and write here location.search, you can see that this is our search, so question mark and then our query parameters. So this is exactly what we have everywhere, uh, we are getting this for example from routing in every page, and then we can give it and parse inside our query string. So here we will have location.search and now here let's console log parsed, comma parsed. And let's check how it looks like. But as you can see when we reload the page nothing is happening because of Webpack. Every time when we do our changes we need to build our Webpack because we import it here in index.html our dist file and we need to build it. This is why I will run webpack once again and now when I reload the page you can see parsed full bar. So as you can see with this single line from query string we can parse our string like question mark and then some parameters inside to our object. And obviously in JavaScript we want to work with objects because we can simply now read properties from the, this object and use them everywhere. For example, let's say that you have some sorting and some filtering. So you can say that here we have like filter and the filtering will be by title maybe. And we have here sorting, so end, come on, sort equals and ascending. And now we're hitting enter and as you can see in parsed, we're getting just these two parameters. So filter, title, sort, ascending. And now we can simply use this object in order to work with these properties and for example fetch data with API with this filtering and sorting. So this is one of the main benefits of using library. You don't need to implement these things on your own and actually they don't exist in plain JavaScript.
So this was parse. Now let's check what is stringify. So as you understand, we are using parse to parse query parameters and we can stringify them back when we prepare them inside our JavaScript. So I will comment this code out and after this create some stringified param. So here will be stringified and this will be our string which is prepared for our URL. So for this we need to call query string stringify and inside we are given an object. So actually, as you saw, the object what was parsed is exactly the object that we need to give inside stringify. So here we can give, for example, sort, and it is ascending, and now title equals, for, uh, actually not title, but filter equals title. Now let's console log here what is stringified. So here is stringified, and we need to run webpack again. Now let's look in browser and as you can see we are getting stringified, filter equals title and sort equals ascending. So as you can see we are getting a completely correct concatenation of all our parameters. And it doesn't matter how many parameters do we have, we just get correct string. So this is really nice and it is really efficient. Now let's do some real example which we are using in every project. For example, let's say that we have some API URL. And actually, this API URL can be different. For example, here I can say that I have API URL, and this is HTTPS, then google.com slash API. And here, for example, we have some articles, question mark, author equals foo. So this is the problem. Normally your API URL will be without question mark like this and then you actually can use your native JavaScript. So you can just assign here some parameters like limit equals 10 and offset equals 20. If you want for example to add pagination to this API URL, this is completely fine but okay it will look nasty without library or without at least helper. But you have problem if you have here for example question mark and then some other parameters that already are there. For example, author equals foo. In this case, you don't know really that you have this question mark and you need to check it first and then you need correctly uh, to merge params back. So you want actually to get at the end a question mark author equals foo and limit equals 10 and offset equals 20. So actually we can write all this logic to create, for example, our uh, custom helper to merge all these properties correctly. So we can check, okay, if we have question marks, then we need to do this and that. But actually we can cover all these cases with our query string library. So let's say that this is exactly our base URL that we need to use with question mark author foo. And we want to cover all cases like it can be with question mark, without question mark, and it should just work. So what we can do here is use special function parse URL from query string. So here let's create parsed URL property and we want here to call query string dot parse url and inside we need to provide our api url so let's check what we will get back so here is our parsed url and we need to build again our webpack so here I'm building webpack, let's look in browser, and this is what we are getting back. So we get an object with two properties, URL and query. And actually URL is our base URL, which means uh, the calling of this method really cutted all query parameters. So this is our base URL, and we can use it everywhere later. And here are query parameters that we had, and here we are getting author foo. And if, for example, we don't have any query parameters, then it will be just an empty object. So what we can do now is just create an object and use it in stringifying back. So what we want to do here is, for example, creating query params property, and it will be simply an object. So here we will use limit, and it will be 20, and for example offset, it will be 0, and now we want to use all properties, all query params of initial API URL. And we can use it with spread, so here I am using parsed URL dot query.
And if you don't know what spread is, it is like the idea that you just want to add all properties of this object inside our current object. So if we had here just author equals foo, we now just add in here one new property author equals foo. If we have like 100 properties, then here will be 100 properties. So let's check now what is inside our query params. So here are query params and let's console log them, but first we need to build webpack. So let's check in browser. As you can see, we are getting the correct object like author foo limit 20 of set 0. So now our query params are ready, they are really uh, correct in any case, doesn't matter if we have an in initial URL query params or not, and now we can create our stringified params. This is why after we can create new property const a stringified a query params and here we can use query string dot stringify so we want to stringify our object and our object is query params so at the end we will get our stringified query params so let's check what we have inside i will build webpack once again and let's look in browser. As you can see, all our parameters are correctly stringified and we have here author equals foo, limit 20 and offset 0. And this is exactly the point to use this library. We are getting correct query params in any case. So now at the end we can create our URL with params. And here we want just to use concatenation of parsed URL dot URL. This is our parsed based URL. Now here we need to use question mark because it was not there. And now here we want to concatenate it with our stringified query params. So let's have a look. What is our URL with params? I will build webpack once again. And in browser you can see that now this is correct URL. So this is exactly how I would use this library in real project if you need to add some query params to the existing API URL. Because in this case we for sure cover all cases, we don't miss anything and it is really easy to read. As you can see we are not concatenating a lot of strings here, we just parse URL, we are working with objects, we just merge in some data and then we stringify this data back. I am not a huge fan of installing a lot of libraries in your projects, because then it is really difficult to support them, and you need constantly to update these libraries. But actually query string library is super small, and you have just several methods inside, but it really simplifies working with URLs. This is why I highly recommend it. Also, don't forget to check my full courses about various web technologies and I will link all of them in the description box below. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in my next video.